Hi, we are Real Deal Travel. Jerry's been working on his truck. Setting it up so it's easier to camp in. And you have a camper? I have a canopy. Okay. I just built a bed platform. I have a 2001 Ford Ranger 4x4. We were on a 10 inch memory foam mm -hmm. mattress that I trimmed and actually fit in the bottom of the bed. But what we found was the wheel wells squeeze us in together. And evidently I like that because I slept like a baby, but I'm on top of you. So you didn't like that. I had nightmares that I was in an MRI machine. As that was, that's raised quite a bit. Uh -huh. So my thought was I would build a platform that was perfectly parallel with the wheel well. So I got it as low as I can so that we have a completely flat surface. I have storage underneath the platform now. I picked up a free futon off of Craigslist. So I've got a four inch, a little bit wider than a full size mattress. So we've got a new mattress that goes on there. Oh. I'll sleep fine, but it's close. Today's project, I'm gonna to try to build an awning. An awning? An awning. That'll be on the side of the canopy? I don't want it on the side. It'll, it'll oh, mount on the, the side for travel. Okay. And then I'll mount it on the back. I don't understand why people have the awning on the side of their truck when they're getting out of the truck on the back end. Because the pop-up's on the back. Well, I mean, if, if you're sleeping in the canopy, you're getting it out of the back. So that's where I want it. At least that's where I want it right now. And that's where I'm going to try it. Most of them are like six by eight or eight by eight if you buy a commercial one. Mm -hmm. I wanted something a little bigger. So this is going to be eight by 12 roughly. Depends on which tarp I choose. I've got two tarp tarps here. One's eight by 10, one's like seven and a half by nine and a half. And I went to the store, tried to do it as inexpensively as I can yeah. and still achieve my hopeful outcome. This is gonna mount on top of the canopy. I already have rails or super strut or unistrut mounted on top of my steel canopy uh, going lengthwise. It's like 43 inches apart. So this is gonna lay on top of that and hook up to a bracket. So it'll be upright like this. My plan is to take both ends of the tarp, the eight foot width, and I'm going to screw it in. Got some one inch, one inch, no, three quarter inch wood screws, some quarter inch uh, washers, and I'm just gonna take the, the end seam that's stitched and where the eyelets are, and maybe six inches apart all the way across here. And obviously that'll go out to there. So that's where it's gonna be mounted. This is my hardware to mount it to the brackets that's already on the uh, truck on the canopy. These are gonna be my extension poles, which are just painting poles, I think is what they are. And these will extend to 12, 12 feet. Obviously I only need, only need them to go to 10. So on this end, the poles are going to, I'm trying not to destroy the poles because they're useful. I, if I have to, I will, but this is a pipe hanger for one inch iron pipe. Okay. So it's like a buck and a half. And so that'll mount on the board and this will just slip right in there. Now it'll hold that in. And then on this further end, I've got another furring board. Oh, I don't know if I said that far board is a one by three furring board. So it's really cheap. It's like, even with today's lumber prices, like three and a half bucks. This is a one by two furring board. So this will be the end that's sticking out from the truck. And so on this end that has the, the threaded end uh, that you would put a, you know, a, a squeegee or a brush, or a roller for paint. I have half inch electrical conduit clamps, EMT, half inch EMT conduit clamps that will go over this. Now this is tight, so I might have to do some massaging there. But so that'll, that's where these will just insert there and insert there. And then I can stretch out the tarp, right? Make it taut that way. So that's, that's the plan there. And obviously, and this is the mounting hardware for the MT clamps, just some 832 by one inch countersunk uh, machine screws that I'll, I'll drill all the way through here and 
and just screw those onto there. And the first thing I'm going to do is put some kind of finish on these boards because they are going to be out in the weather. So, so I've got two different tarps. They're, they're uh, Harbor Freight tarps. They're two heaviest types, the Extreme and then whatever that next one is. But I haven't decided which ones. I like the silver one better for the color because it's going to reflect the heat. This one's got silver on one side and black on the other. It's a little bit bigger. Uh, I'll figure that out uh, after I paint and make a commitment to it. Either one will work. I'm going to paint the boards I'm using. With what kind of paint? This is leftover paint. We painted our banister and, and stair rails with this oh. and it's held up really well. So it seems to be fairly durable and it's cheap because I own it. And I'm just going to use a that like a four inch foam roller and paint the boards. No primer or anything. It's oil oil enriched enamel, so it should it should seal up the wood. This is what I'm gonna use on the part of the frame that is away from the truck. So tarp will be attached to this theoretically, right? And I'll use the pole, spread the tarp out, tension it. And I'm going to use half inch uh, clamps for EMT conduit, electrical conduit, on this threaded end of the paint pole, whatever this thing is called, the extension pole. Anyway, this is a tight fit. Um, these are, this is like 0.7 inches, and this opening is 0.7 inches. It's, it's snug, which you would think would be ideal, except for I don't want to have to screw it in. I just want to be able to slip it in to here, right? So I want it to be easy. So I just wanted to open this up a little bit so that it fit on there. And what I ended up doing, so I grabbed another paint pole, coincidentally, that is, this is like eight tenths of an inch. So it's just slightly wider than the opening of the clamp. And I'm going to press it onto there, and I just used a clamp to hold it there. So now the, flan the uh, mounting flanges are just slightly bent up, so now I'm just going to bend them down. Okay, so now that I've opened that up a little bit, this is loose and should be able to slip in. And I already tested this, so let me show you real quick what I got. Okay, so when I actually go to build this thing after the boards are painted and start putting it together, I want to double these up. I want to fully capture that threaded end so it has a lot of support. And so this is my little test, test piece. And I'm also shimming the clamps up. So that they just go in effortlessly. That's that's my goal, is that I can stick it in there, tension the uh, the extension pole, and this tension will keep this fully seated. And no drama, because I don't want to I don't want to fight it. This should be easy. So. I'll set this up real quick so we get an idea of what it looks like. So that's an example. It'll be something along like that. So uh, both clamps supporting it and in theory it just easily goes in there, but it's stout. It can't come out, and that that rod in the threaded end is fully inside of the clamps. So that's my goal. So between opening up the clamp and then shimming it, this goes in really easy with enough slop that it, this can move around a little bit. Hopefully, you know, I don't want it to be super snug and tight because it's going to be blown in the wind and I want it to have a little bit of give uh, because the ground won't be perfectly even and the wind will blow it and everything else and it's wood so it's going to contract with moisture and heat and all that. So I wanted some slop. 
and put it in real easy. It's got lots of support. Pretty simple. But if you try to copy this, you'll want to kind of have an idea of how to spread these out. I mean, there's, you could pound them, pull them apart with pliers or whatever, but this was spreading them out on that was very easy. Just another slightly larger rod. So I had a choice between two tarps. Uh -huh. I had this silver on both sides, which is seven and a half by nine and a half roughly. And I had the black one with silver on one side, but the silver's on the unfinished side. So it looks kind of janky when I want the silver up against the sun. And it's literally eight by 10. It's all the way out to the ends of the board. I kind of wanted a little overhang off the ends of the board so that my hardware wasn't under the tarp and I could, the poles that run lengthwise, <laughs> the um, adjustable ones, I wanted them to be outboard of the tarp just a little bit so that I could um, top the, the sides of the tarp against the poles with either Velcro or some bungees. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that yet. I haven't got that far. But with the black tarp, the best I could do was to run them directly underneath and then figure out how to pull them down onto the pole. It made it a little more difficult. So I'm going to end up giving up five and a half inches of width by going with the silver tarp. But this also will be facing the sun and it doesn't look unfinished on top. And it's a little bit lighter. It's a little lighter than tarp. So that's what I'm going to go with. So the boards are eight and a half. This is just a hair over seven and a half. It's a seven and a half inch tarp, but it's a couple uh, tenths of an inch longer. So I'll have, I already measured this out. So I'm going to have, this is like 5.5 inches of place to hang. So, so I can split that difference and I can uh, mount my pole just outboard. So right here. And same thing on that end, the clamps that are going to accept the ends of the pole. And then I'm going to my upright my upright pole on the end. I'm going to drill straight through and try and pick up the end grommet of the tarp also through this. So we'll see how it all pans out. I'm making an assumption that the tarp is square. It occurred to me as I was laying it out that it may not be exactly square. So hopefully it's close and doesn't screw me up. So first thing I'm going to do is I've chosen my tarp and I got a plan for where I'm going to space it is I'm going to start putting the hardware or probably mount that to the truck first, this because this is going to be on the truck. Get that figured out. Then I'll mount the um, fitting bracket for the end of the adjustable pole. And then I'll go to that end and I'll put the half inch uh, electrical conduit clamps on. And I might just actually just put it together without the tarp on it first. Take a look at it and then go back and do the hardware. Or attach it to the tarp to the boards. I'm measuring my mounting points on the back of the canopy. So they're 43 inches apart in these eye bolts, and that's what I'm going to I'm going to turn these uh, parallel to the one by three, and that's when I'm going to mount them. So. Okay. We've got 
25. Ooh. Way off. So these are the bolts that more than likely I'm going to use to mount this board to the back of the truck through the large eyelets in the uh, on the rails. So these are quarter inch. You're going to drill a quarter inch hole. Um, see how easy they are to slide in and out. Because I want to be able to remove. Them. So let's start start with some holes. Hopefully straight. Yeah, I'm not sucking it all the way in. That's stout. There we go. The tarp is going to be screwed into the top of that, right, and go out. And then I've got the brackets that will go here for the adjustable poles, right? And so this will serve as the foundation for all that. Our extension pole is going to go on the sides of the tarp uh, top, making the tarp tight, taut. It's adjustable, right? It's just a paint pole. So on the fat end, the bottom end, uh, it's got a rubber handle, and you know there's a lot of different brands, or whatever. But they usually do have a hole in the end of the pole to hang it by. I suppose is what it's for. So my plan originally was these are one-inch iron pipe hangers. Uh, get them at Home Depot or Lowe's, and I was just gonna mount this like that and then these would just insert there and sit there and with the the pressure of the pole being extended would hold it in and that would work fine but I was fiddling around with this uh, clamp and I was you know figuring out how I was what size bolt I was going to use to mount it and I, I realized, you know, I'm going to take this apart so I can mount this, make it easier. And I went, oh, look at that. I don't need that other piece, and this is more secure. I can just run the hardware through it. And then I'm like, well, I'm already using wing nuts to mount the board, and I, I want to get away from having to screw stuff in. So I went and got, they call these wire lock pin. Okay, whatever this is. It's a two inch, it's a quarter inch diameter pin wire lock. I think we called them hinge pins, but whatever. So I'm gonna mount this on there, right? I'll be able to just stick that up to the And then that, so that'll be mounted like that. And then this thing can swing up and down because when I first pull this out, the, the ends of this are going to be hanging onto the ground until I set up the other end. And that way it's uh, firmly attached. It's not going to come out. So, and it's simple and it's fast. So now I just have to mount these there. I've got fender washers. We got five, so I'm going to go with the 5 16th bolt, right? And I'm going to put a fender washer behind this so that if it gets pushed, it doesn't press into the board. And then I'll put another one on the back side with uh, some lock nut. That should take care of that. So that's what I'm going to do next.
Okay, so this is now mounted our uh, clevis pin. We'll go in there. Test our rod out here. Nice. There we go. So that swings freely. I'll be able to, yeah, I'm happy with that. Come off relatively easy and quickly. I'm going to put the hardware on the far end of the tarp frame. So this is going to be the part farthest from the back end of the truck. I've got my uh, half inch electrical conduit clamps that I've oversized a little bit so that they accept the, the uh, threaded end of the just the rods. So I'm doubling these up. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna screw them into the wood. I'm actually gonna screw it through the wood with nuts and everything on some machine washer. So I'm not stressing the wood so much. These are the machine screws that are going to go in it. These are number eight. I think they're an inch and a quarter. It might be one inch. Yeah, I think they're an inch and a quarter. Anyway. Now we're going to put together the far end of the tarp frame, or the thread end of the tension pole will go, which is going to go into these clamps here. So I've got uh, number eight machine screws. I've got some finish washers. I'm going to shim them up a little bit to make sure that they, the hole is loose. I don't want to fight putting that threaded end in. So anyway, first thing I'm going to do is get these screws in the back side here. Washers, I'm using as shims. The idea that this threaded end will slip in here, like so. Okay, so now I'm taking the tarp and I am going to attach it to the pole, the smaller cross beam that's away from the truck. So I have six grommets, and that's what I'm going to do first is space them out and tension them a little bit, not too much. And then I will put three screws in between each grommet. So I got 21 screws to do across here. And I can show you what I'm doing in the grommets to make sure that the grommet, because the grommet's like a half inch hole and I don't want it sliding under the screw. So let me show you what I'm doing. I have a number eight finish washer and that's designed to take to give a more finished look on a countersunk screw like that. The reason why I'm putting the finish washer into the grommets, so I'm sandwiching that finish washer in that hole, and then my screw will go there, right? And the reason being, this is like a half inch hole, and I've got number eight uh, wood screws here. And what would happen 
if that was just there with like say a, a fender washer on there is this will flop around now I'm not sure it's that critical but I can eliminate all that play by simply doing that that grommet won't move I'm gonna do all the grommets first and then I'm gonna do I think one two three in between each one so that'll be after I get all the grommets spaced out and all this laying flat so I have the tarp attached to the far pole or the far horizontal um, you saw me put the screws into the grommets and then I just spaced three equal screws in between each so that's very obvious we'll show that later uh, what it looks like but now I'm going to do this end so this is the end that's going to attach to the truck and as you can see it's not square it's not square at all so that may be something you run into on your tarps is your tarp not being square so you'll want to check that anyway I've squared this one up I've redone grommets everything else I'm not going to get into that hopefully your tarp is square and you don't have to fold stuff and anyway this is now square I've got clamps on each grommet position so I'm not going to put screws in those yet what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark my three screws in between put all those screws in I'll take the clamps off and then I'll screw in through the grommets okay so I'm going to mark my three locations in between each grommet and given that this is such a high quality tarp they're all unequally spaced you could eyeball it it wouldn't matter that much but I go and measure it like these are 16 apart so I'll go 8 12 4 so that gives me approximate I'm just going to go across and mark each of those yeah, like this one is 17 and a half so 17 and a half, eight and three quarters roughly. And then I think it's four and three eighths. Yeah. Right about there. Four and three eighths. Okay, so I'm just gonna go across here and you can probably watch all of that on each one, but I'll get those marked and then I'll put screws in. Screws that are going in between the grommets. I've got uh, some 3 16 by 3 quarter inch uh, fender washers. And then I've got some number 8 plain old wood screws. So I've got the tarp attached to the board that attaches to the truck all the way across except for one last grommet just so I can show you again how I'm doing the grommets. All right, take the last clamp off. There's our grommet hole. Somewhere approximately the center. Again, I'm going to put a finish washer. If I can get my thumb down. It's a number eight finish washer. Just fits inside the grommet, keeps it from pulling. All right, so fender washer, a quarter inch fender washer. Finish washer upside down. And then that'll sandwich that grommet. And there it is. So that's all buttoned up. And as you can see, this tarp is not square, not even close. Uh, I've gotten everything squared up, but then it gives me weird overhangs. But I just went with it and didn't sweat it too much because it's a $10 tarp and it'll probably rip at some point. I'll have to replace it. This frame's done. The tarp is done. I've got to work on the uprights. So these are my vertical uprights. This one's not done. This one I just did. I'm going to show you how I did them. Anyway, these are four to eight foot 
painting poles or window washing poles, which are like the tension poles that go horizontal, right? So they're adjustable. Okay, so the threaded end of these poles is designed for paint rollers and squeegees and mop heads and broom heads, right? Uh, but this threaded end for my vertical upright isn't going to work for me. I just need a simple pin. So what I did is I drilled and tapped the top of it, the center of it, drilled as straight a hole as I could freehand. This is quarter inch 20 all thread. So my plan is I'll put this in here, right? Run it down a ways. I'm going to leave about two inches sticking up. So I'm not going to measure that right now because I'm going to take this back out. Then I got a jam nut on there with a with a star washer. What I'm actually going to do when I put these together finally is I'm going to JB weld them and tighten them up. They're just going to look like that. So I'll show you how I do that. The very first thing I'm going to place that, that secure. Then I'm going to grab a punch and find the approximate center. Centered enough. Okay, so run and quarter uh, tap through that. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just drill an eighth inch pilot. And this will be awesome because you can see how the bearings in this. The drill gone. Okay, pilots drilled. Our next, now uh, the appropriate drill for a quarter 20 is a 13 64ths. So this is the real hole. Hopefully I'll get it fairly straight. Got our 13 64th hole drilled. Oil on my tap. Try to get it fairly straight. This metal's fairly soft, so it just taps it pretty easy. So, I need to make another pin for this, as that is now drilled and tapped. So, I'm going to cut another section that's approximately the same length. I already marked the length that I need or I want. Dull hacksaw. So I've dressed both ends. I've got my jam nut with a captive star washer rod. Let's see if it actually goes in there. Oh, look, it works. That's always good. So the way that'll work is Got that in there, I tighten that, I just snug that up, and I'll JB weld this in there, and uh, probably will never be able to get it out without destroying the end, but that'll work. So this, these two, 
will go on the bar on the end that's away from the truck and I'll drill two quarter inch holes or thereabouts maybe slightly larger so these go in easy go through the board and then I'll just put a loose uh, wing nut on there so that uh, they can't come out and then these you know I can adjust the height of my pony so we're almost done with the awning try setting it up here it comes first thing we're going to do this part goes on the back of the canopy set it up top of there we've got two mounting holes that align with these eyelets off a little bit of room there. This is what I'm going to use. We've got two quarter inch fender washers. There, I think they're an inch and a half fender washers. Eyelet, that's a quarter 20 and a quarter 20 wing nut. So that's going to go through the board. snug on there. Next thing, first time I've set it up, so I think the logical thing to do now is to put my extension poles in. And these go here. After using the tarp several times now on camping trips, and uh, one trip was like almost a week long in really windy conditions, I've found that the awning set up to be super stable and really, really durable, surprisingly so. If it's windy, I just put some guy lines on the vertical poles and it is rock solid. The only issue is I have to remember to lower one corner when it's raining or else it will fill up with water, lots of water, and surprisingly the tarp doesn't run, but gallons and gallons of water. So I learned that the hard way and I ended up painting the paint poles, the tarp poles, the silver so they match everything. And so I'm really happy with the way that this turned out. More videos about our travels are here and click here down below to see a video that YouTube picked out just for you.